So wonderful, wonderful Jesus, he is so wonderful. Does anybody know him today? Wonderful Jesus, Jesus, wonderful Jesus, Jesus, He is so, so wonderful. Wonderful Jesus, Jesus, wonderful Jesus, Jesus, oh Lord. Mm. Oh, meditate on him day and night. When you couldn't do it, and when you didn't know nobody who could, woo, Jesus stepped in the room and said, everything's all right. And that's really the only reason why you're still here. That's why we're all sitting in heavenly places today. What a pleasure to serve a God like this. What an honor to be counted worthy enough to be called his son. Do you realize that we are sons and daughters of God? And you thought your granddaddy had a name people recognized. But we are sons and daughters of God. That says the world just to know that we are still his children and that he loves us in such a powerful way. Come on and put those hands together. Let's praise God for what we feel here. We thank God and honor him for his spirit that has met us here in such a powerful way. And we thank God always for our chief apostle. Dr. Apostle Lobius Murray. Come on and put those hands together. Thank God for our first lady, Dr. Shirley Murray. Come on. Hallelujah. He's so wonderful. And he must really love us to give us people such as our pastor and our first lady. We honor the Lord. Thank God they are people of integrity. Amen. And I can attest for a fact that what you see here in church, that's the way it is all the time. Can't say that about everybody, but we can certainly say that about our apostle. I thank God. I've had the privilege to live with him, to travel with him, to ride with him. You name it, we've done it. And I appreciate the Lord because he is a man of integrity. And he lives the life. He and our first lady, they live the life that they preach about. And I honor the Lord for that. Thank God. You know, one of the greatest gifts we can have in this life is a good example. And we appreciate the Lord for his example. I remember once I was on the road and I, I, uh, my job carried me away and I had to leave on a Sunday. And I believe that Sunday night they placed the church on a fast. And I wasn't here that Sunday night, so I didn't hear about it. So when I get back in town... I was riding the apostle around and I just pulled in the jack in the box. And I ordered my food and I looked over, I said, Granddaddy, do you want me to order you anything? He says, no, that's okay. I don't want anything. So I drove up and paid for the food, got home and I was eating and my wife looked at me and said, Herman, what are you doing? I said, I'm eating. She says, he placed the church on the fast. 
and nobody's supposed to be eating. And my mind went back to when I was sitting in that drive through. <laughs> she said, Herman, you tempted the pastor. And he the one placed us on a fast. And I felt so bad, I never even told him about it, didn't say nothing else to him about it. She said, Herman, he gonna think you ain't ready. But you know what? I thank God. I thank God. He's a man of integrity. He let me do it if I wanted to, but that wasn't going to change his mind. He stayed on his <laughs> And I appreciate the Lord for the examples that he has given us. We are so blessed. I don't even think we know just how blessed that we really are. And we thank God always for our visitors. Visitors, I know you're here. Just shoot your hand up in the air and let us recognize you. Look around, y'all. Look at all these visitors. Thank God for you. Somebody sitting close to them, reach over and give them a good full gospel. God bless you. Let them know that they are among family and that we love them with the love of the Lord. Now, we say it all the time. We would have just had church anyway, whether you were here or not. But the thing is, it just would not have been the same if you had not have come to worship the Lord with us. And we thank God for you. Thank God for those that are watching the broadcast of Deliverance, they're sending donations, sending prayer requests. We are just really, really, really reaching out. And I thank God that he has expanded this ministry far outside of these walls that we see here. And we are impacting the world for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at somebody and just tell them, neighbor, there is a word from the... Y'all didn't say that right. It ain't been that long. Look at somebody else and tell them, neighbor, there is a word from... We're going to do it one more time just for good measure. The third time for the Holy Ghost. Come on here. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, there is a word from the Lord. Thank God that God is always speaking into the lives of his people. And I found out that it ain't that God ain't speaking, but somebody ain't listening. And for the past two sermons that we preach, we dealt with uh, the subject of taking advantage of grace. And we, we understood that the Bible says that shall we continue in sin that grace may abound. God forbid, not the apostle, not Brother Herman, not the preacher, not your bishop, but God forbid that we should sin. Why? Because we are supposed to be dead to sin. And if we are dead to sin, then how shall we live any longer therein? You know, it does not matter uh, what you do to a dead man. He doesn't know anything about it. You can dress him up in the fine of clothes, $5,000 suits you can put him in, but he'll never know how it feels to walk through a mall and have people look at him and admire him for the suit he has on. No, it don't matter what you wear when you land across there. Uh, uh, people don't want to trade places with you. They don't want to be like you when you're here. You know why? Because you are dead. And the Bible says that we are dead to sin. And it does not matter what goes on around us. If we are dead to sin, we no longer live therein. Hmm. And if, 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 if we believe that Jesus came to make it uh, possible hmm, for us to sin and still be saved, we are sadly mistaken. No, touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, somebody told you wrong. Somebody done told you wrong. No, no, he didn't come to make it possible for us to go to heaven in our sins, but what he came to make possible was for us to live a sin-free life. Uh-oh, that just uh, uh, didn't sit well with somebody because that's not what you heard. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible declares mm, that Jesus left us an example. You know what he left us an example of? Uh, that we should follow in his steps. Now, what steps were they, Brother Herman? I'm going to tell you. Thank you for asking who did no sin. Uh-oh, that didn't sit well with somebody because that's not what we've heard. But the Bible says he did no sin, neither was there a guile found in his mouth. And I thank God for the example that he gave us because we don't have to sin. And I know there are times when, when we hear that everybody sin, you sin, I sin, uh, 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 no, uh, uh, we fall, no, you fall down, not me, because now unto him that is able to 
keep me from falling. Now, if he's able to keep me from falling, then touch your neighbor and say, why fall in the first place? <laughs> why? Because he is able to keep me from falling. And we dealt with the fact that words form thoughts and thoughts form opinions. I feel like preaching here. Y'all gonna stay with me here. Words form thoughts and thoughts form opinions. And now because we, we have confessed it for so long, words get in your spirit. And you know they used to have a saying when we were children, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That was the biggest lie anybody ever told me. Why? Because there were plenty of times what folks said about me sent me home crying. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing here. Y'all can sit there and act like y'all ain't been there, but I know the truth. <laughs> but you know what I found out? Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can break your spirit. <laughs> There are some people in here don't even strive for anything more than what you got. Why? Because some little old not need man that left you told you you wasn't going to ever be nothing in life. And now that I ain't here no more, everything in your life going down. And you believe that. And now you even stop striving to go in. I feel like I got to preach in here. You stop even striving to go higher because somebody told you something. There were some people that told you it was no need. And you even trying for what you were going after why because you didn't have enough money your job wasn't good enough you wasn't the right color you didn't have the uh, the, the right last name y'all ain't gonna say nothing here but you know what those were words that broke your spirit huh? but when I opened the word of God huh? and I heard the Bible say I can do all things huh? touch somebody and just tell a neighbor not anything but all things huh? I can do it all through Christ that strengtheneth me and so we understand the power of words and that's why I don't agree with even singing the song they may sing it out there but ain't nobody go ever sing it in here we fall down we get up now the devil is a liar you know the Bible says he's able to keep us from falling and I'm confused because a couple of years ago all we heard was after you've done all you can you just stand and now we fall down. Now do I stand? Do I fall? Do I stand or do I fall? I'm not schizophrenic. I'm a child of the king. I feel like I got to preach a while. And so now we understand that words form thoughts and that thoughts form opinions. And that's the reason why we hear it so much now in the church that can't nobody live perfect. You know why? Because a bunch of imperfect people have been preaching a bunch of of imperfect gospels huh? and now those words have gotten into your spirit huh? oh, yeah, 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 yeah. but I come to tell you if you gonna make it into the kingdom huh? there's gonna have to be some strength come from somewhere huh? that's gonna enable you to stand when the world is going straight to hell huh? touch somebody tell them neighbor after I've done all I can huh? I just got to stand and so then we understand now that we've got to watch what we say huh? and now we've been told for so long that can't nobody be perfect uh, that people now no longer even strive for perfection we don't strive to be perfect no more because we have been told that ain't nobody perfect uh, but no no the Bible says be ye perfect uh, even as your father which is in heaven is perfect and if he told us to do it then perfection must be possible you ought to really reach over and tell about two people that neighbor perfection is possible oh it's possible for me to live sin free down here on this earth and you know I hear people say all the time I just feel it in my spirit here yeah. I feel I hear people say it all the time no no the thing is you ain't perfect because you got a scar you ain't perfect because if you were perfect you would never you would never get two words tangled up and you you would never split verbs no but we ain't talking about physical perfection no, or natural perfection no you know why because there's sometimes you're gonna come out the house and your shoes ain't gonna match your shirt there are sometimes you're going to come out the house and you're going to have a blue ribbon in your head and you're going to have on a green dress. There are sometimes when you come out the house, you're going to miss a 
button and your suit is going to be hanging off of you all kind of crazy ways physical perfection is not possible but when you step over into the spirit I feel it here when you move over into the Holy Ghost and when you realize that no sin is going to enter into his presence and when you realize that he that committed sin is of the devil when you realize that all liars shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone when you realize that man shall not lie with mankind like he would with a woman then you will strive for perfection I can't help it you better have it cause perfection it's possible then we we, we we move from taking advantage of grace and we move to if mercy ever ran out if mercy ever ran out where would we be if mercy ever ran out if God stopped showing us mercy <laughs> where would we be if he gave us what we deserve and some of you need to just think back just a few years ago when you was out there on the ballroom floor and you were dancing in the club and even though people were getting shot every night every Saturday night after the club turned out you just kept on going anyway why because the danger excited you and you went there and you was just getting down with it you was breaking it down and somebody pulled out a gun and started shooting and the bullet went right past your head and hit somebody behind you and you mean to tell me you still next Saturday night gonna be sitting up in the club no I wouldn't even wait for Sunday morning I would find a church that's holding service late Saturday night and I would run in there and fall on my knees and ask God to come into my heart why because if mercy ever ran out next time the bullet won't go two inches past my head next time the bullet won't just graze my ear not if mercy ever ran out after I have taken advantage of grace you mean I'm gonna hang around here and keep playing around until mercy run out don't you remember a few years ago some of us that had those potty mouths we cursed and said every ungodly thing under the sun and even though we were using God's name in vain and calling him all kind of stuff and giving God all kind of last names sit there and act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about oh, if God didn't kill you then my God now that you're saved huh? backsliding shouldn't even be a part of your vocabulary huh? why because if mercy ever ran out then that means I got to deal with wrath huh? and if wrath ever get here huh? oh my lord huh? if wrath ever comes your way huh? then all of that talking that you thought God was going to do huh? all of that is going straight out the window hmm? and that brings me to today's message huh? the other side of God huh? just look at somebody and just talk to them tell them neighbor you don't want to see the other side of God now you don't want to see that other side of God no uh -uh, no if you got a chance to praise him now then you don't want to see the other side of God why because the other side I guarantee you that if you can't do right and you're dealing with grace then when wrath come around the corner my lord it ain't even time to talk just look at somebody again and tell them neighbor you don't want to know huh, the other side of God huh, huh, those of you that have your Bibles just hold it up in the air and shake it in the atmosphere huh, come on let the devil know that you didn't come empty handed but that you uh, hold it up hold it up high huh, 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 let him know you came packing power thank God because everything is going down hmm, but I feel like preaching y'all but the word of God huh, and everybody that has their sword today hmm, turn quickly with us to the book of Proverbs Proverbs an old familiar passage of scripture Proverbs chapter number one and we'll begin reading at verse number 22 Proverbs is the book of wisdom brother Herman all right huh? well I'm glad you understand that because when we read out of this book huh, then you will leave here a little wiser than you were when you came in here huh? why you did you say why I'm glad you asked huh? because we are about to see what God intends for the people that are called by his name and I want you today if you're not saved and if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost and if you're not ready to go back with him when he comes then just hang around a little while longer and we'll see if we can't fix that by the time you get home and eat that chicken dinner 
Proverbs chapter number one, verse number 22. And when you have it, say amen. amen. And the Bible gives us this intelligence. How long, ye simple ones? Uh oh. Will ye love simplicity? Blessings, blessings, blessings. Blessings, blessings, blessings. If they don't preach blessings, then I can't go there. If they talk about anything other than blessings, then that message wasn't for me. He calling you simple. Because when you were babes, you had to do, deal with the milk of the gospel. But when you've been saved two years, now it's time for you to... Uh, 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 to be weaned. Time for you to start eating some chopped up steak or, or chicken that they done ripped off the bone. They ought to be able to give you something heavier than milk. And if you've been saved five years and, and because they don't preach blessings every time you come to church, you can't stay there, the Bible calling you simple. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. Turn you and my reproof. I'm giving you an opportunity to go another way. Because the way you're going is going to end in destruction. So he says, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. And ain't that what's happening now? God is pouring out his spirit. I will make known my words unto you. Uh-oh. But then he flips the script. Because I have called. And he refused. I have stretched out my hands. And no man regarded. But ye have said it not all my counsel. And would none of my reproof. When I tried to turn you around and cause you to go in the way that I wanted you to go. You said it at not. You just pushed it over and just turned caution to the wind. And you didn't even listen to the warning that I gave you. And you know what he says now. He says verse number 26. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock you when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me. Uh-oh. But I will not answer. But that ain't what I heard, Brother Herman. I heard that if you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. But let me tell you something. Because he already tried to get you to go one way and you refused to go, he said, there just might come a day when you call on me and I'm not going to even answer. Is that what he said? Then shall they shall seek me early. But they shall not find me. Why? For they had hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Terrible because he talked to us and talked to us and talked to us and because we didn't want to live right and because we didn't want to hear what that preacher said and because they told us that's just what y'all preach and, and I don't go to that church listen holiness is too big to be confined in any four walls now holiness goes straight across the board it doesn't matter what kind of church you go to just as long as you are holy brother Herman I don't understand they don't call my church the holiness church they call my church the Baptist church that's all right if you Baptist just be a Holy Ghost Baptist I, I, I go to the Methodist church that's okay that's all right if your method is just be holy. Why? Because holiness is not a denomination. No. Holiness is God's standard for his people. And if you are calling yourself a child of God, it don't matter what you call yourself. If you're holy, just be holy. But he said, because I called you. And nobody wanted to hear what I had to say. What ended up happening was that I just withdrew mercy and mercy ran out. And now I have left you to deal with the other side of God. You ought to look at two people and tell them, neighbor, you don't want to see the other side of God. You don't want to see that side of him. You, you don't want to see that side of God. I ain't scared. And I hear people say all the time, you know, I don't fear the Lord. You just like Pharaoh. Who is God that I should fear him? 
who is God that I should obey him? And I'm this and I'm that. But you know what? It don't matter how tough you are. My Lord, I feel it here. The apostle preached a message entitled the baddest thing on the block. You might be tough, but there is somebody that's tougher than you. Well, I ain't scared to die. You know why you saying that? Let me let you in on something. Let me tell you why you saying you ain't scared to die. It's simply because you ain't never died. My Lord, but if you ever die, then you change your testimony. Look at y'all. Look at y'all. Ain't going to say nothing here. That's all right. Then just sit right there. But if you ever ever even came close to death and death wrapped his hands around your throat oh god could i preach here and if he started choking the life out of you and you sitting up there you change your testimony i ain't you ain't never die so keep talking about what you ain't scared of because the bible says it's appointed unto man once to die just keep acting like don't nothing affect you but you got an appointment that you can't cancel there is an appointment that you must meet and i heard the word of the lord declare that once you die then comes the judgment and if i were you i'd get all this stuff taken care of right now i heard my grandmother say years ago she said listen son i would rather send my sins on ahead of me and let them be judged already when i get there than to walk up to the gates and look back and i got a trail of mess following me i touch them out and tell them neighbor do it now do it now so the only reason why you'll say that you ain't scared of god is because you've never really been acquainted with the other side of god and i know you don't really hear many preachers preach about the other side of God because all we hear is that God is a God of love and that God won't ever turn you over and, and God will never give up on a man but you know what that's not even scriptural the Bible says he saw sought repentance with tears and even though he cried he just went too far and he stayed too long how oh God could I preach here and even though Saul only did one thing that we know of and David committed sin after sin after sin after sin sin David took a man's wife that was one sin then he had the man killed that was another sin it was just sin on top of sin but yet God forgave David and we still call David a man after God's own heart but here goes Saul Saul disobeyed one time and God said Samuel stop talking to me about him haven't you noticed lately I haven't talked to him in dreams and haven't you noticed lately I haven't dealt with Saul here lately and so it doesn't matter how many times your brother has been forgiven if God is dealing with you now the Bible says the day that you hear my voice he says harden not your heart and so you've got to understand there is a side of God that, that we don't hear too much about anymore but you know I got to thinking the other day and then I started to realize that, that, that now we read scripture and we read it from such a natural connotation so that we pollute the scriptures because we bring it down subject to the laws of nature and time but when you understand the nature of God and understand that God is not regulated by nature neither is he confined by time and space but God literally sits on the outside of this time space continuum and God now says that you've got to do what I say and not what I do because the law that governs God is a higher law why because God is a law unto himself and because we have now began to read the Bible from a natural standpoint uh, then we have come up here lately with the fact that now the Bible holds so many different contradictions uh, and how do you know that the Bible is true how can we be sure that the whole Bible is right uh, and you know I went through the Bible and I read up on some of these scriptures that they talk about now now you know it's Proverbs what is that 25 uh, t Proverbs 26 4 and 5 uh, Proverbs 26 and 4 says answer not a fool according to his father lest thou be like him but then Proverbs 26 and 5 the very next verse says answer a fool according to his folly lest he be wise in his own eyes well brother Herman the, the verse before that said don't answer a fool according to his folly then God turned right around the next verse and says but answer a fool according to his folly listen what God is trying to get you to understand is that there are times when you got to hold your peace because if you get an argument with some people then you will strengthen their argument but then there
there are some folk that just don't know and if you say it to them it'll turn their whole life around touch somebody and tell them neighbor you just need to know when that's all you just need to know when don't answer a fool according to his folly or else you'll be like him but then answer a fool according to his folly or he'll be wise in his own eyes and then we hear David say the Lord is good for his mercy endureth forever but then we hear God talking to Moses and says Moses I'll have mercy on whom I will now which one is it brother Herman is it that his mercy endureth forever or is it that he'll have mercy on whom he will is his mercy everlasting or is it that his mercy can run out well let me clear that up for you for those of us that will accept his mercy his mercy is everlasting and for those of us that want to live right his mercy endureth to all generations but for those of us that just won't hear it proof I'll have mercy on whom I will have mercy y'all ain't gonna say nothing here touch somebody and tell them neighbor you just need to read a little bit more just read a little bit more and then I began to study some books here and not none of them books that have you thinking crazy about God y'all need to stay away from some of these books but I got to reading a book uh, uh, what they call an apologetic book now apologetics is simply the art of defending the gospel not that the Bible needs defending but remember there are times when we've got to answer a fool according to his folly and so apologetics teaches that there are certain characteristics or what they would call attributes of God and some of his attributes include his aseity what is that that is his self existence who 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 caused God to come into existence how old is God he ain't old why because the only thing that make you old is time and God don't sit in time he regulates time and so uh, he created himself how could he do that because to create himself he had to exist in order to create so if you say he created himself then he existed before he got here which still makes him an everlasting God then they have what is called the immutability of God now immutability simply means he is unchangeable and can nobody change God and what he was yesterday he is right now and what he is right now he'll be in the morning when you get up touch somebody and tell them neighbor I'm so glad I serve an unchanging God that changes things so God is immutable then we moved on and, and we came to an attribute called impassibility which simply means that God is not a passionate God what do you mean by passionate he's not passionate in that he desires for something that he does not already possess <laughs> no God got it all and God ain't got to want nothing why because the cattle on a thousand hills belong to the Lord and I heard him say if I was hungry I wouldn't tell you nothing about it but then we hear about his eternity which means that he transcends time and that God can step into your situation and I heard Apostle Wallace said years ago he says now God is the only man I know that you can tell him you need him Monday he show up Friday and tell you I'm still on time why because he is eternal and if God got to rewind the time and take you from Friday all the way back to Monday and bless you in your season touch somebody and tell them neighbor God can do whatever he wants to do then we came to an attribute that it's called his simplicity not that God is simple or ignorant but simplicity means that he's not divided in parts no somebody say what well, God is a God of love and if God is a God of wrath then that's not the same God that I know no God is simple he he can be divided into parts he has already been reduced in his in his own godness to the lowest common denominator what he is right now is what he has always been and if God was a killer back then he is impassable y'all ain't gonna say nothing here and God is simple he is simple in that he's not comprised of parts huh? what does that mean brother Herman that means that if God is a killer he's a killer at the same time he's a healer yes, but God heal my body that's okay he's a healer and a killer at the same time the thing is you ain't never did nothing that made him want to kill you but that don't mean that he ain't a killer the Bible says God is a consuming fire has he ever consumed any of y'all no 
Does that mean that he's not a consuming fire? No. Why? Because you ain't never did nothing made him want to consume you. But there just might come a time when you've gone too far. And now God shows you the other side of God. That side that he withheld from you didn't mean he wasn't what he always was. <laughs> that just means that you've never seen that side of him before. <laughs> you know it's like some of these men that marry some of these women. <laughs> and some of these women that marry some of these men. <laughs> oh, they showed you one side before they got married. <laughs> But after the honeymoon was over, my Lord, you looked across there one day and saw them sleeping with their mouth open and their tongue hanging out to the side and a big puddle of that drew that then accumulated on the pillar. Oh Lord, they look rough. They look rough. But guess what? That's the same woman you married. You just ain't never seen that side of her before. And you make her mad. And if she go in that kitchen and start cooking up some of them grits, and it ain't even breakfast time, you better get out the house because something bad is about to go down. I ain't never known her to be, look, she was like that all the time. You just never did nothing that made her want to act like that before. Touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, what he is, he is. And God don't ever change. And so what you've got to realize is that even though God is a God of love, and God shows to us his love every day, day God is at the same time a God of wrath and judgment and you cannot separate God's holiness from his wrath you can't separate God's love from his holiness because while God loves you yes God loves you but at the same time God is a God of wrath and just because you ain't never seen that side of him before doesn't mean that it ain't there Pharaoh had never had God to take the wheels off the chariot before but when they were in the midst of the Red Sea, huh, the Bible says that God huh, went down and took wheels off of the chariot huh, and then it was God that drowned Pharaoh's army huh, and so just because God had never done that to the army of Egypt huh, didn't mean that God was not always a killer huh, because at the same time while he saved Noah and his immediate family millions and millions died in the flood huh, so yes God is a saver of life huh, but yes God is a taker of life life at the same time and I heard Deuteronomy declare what is that 28 and 63 Deuteronomy says God is talking now he says just like I rejoiced over you to bless you you remember when you got that new car and God rejoiced with you don't you remember when you moved into your house and God blessed you don't you remember when you first got saved and God showered you with such a powerful anointing now that you're back sleep, huh, and have gone past the point of no return huh, God said just like I rejoiced with you when you got saved huh, God said I'll turn around and I'll still be rejoicing while I'm destroying you huh oh my God God said I'll kill you and laugh at the same time that's the other side of God that we don't hear about and now we've been told for so long that God just got to keep putting up with us and now we've done so much and God has kept on forgiving us we've taken advantage of grace and now mercy has run out and because we haven't heard that God would kill you now the Bible says you would believe a lie rather than the truth and that's the reason why I'm fearful now for America I got to preach here I'm fearful for America now because we doing some stuff that has offended God we doing some stuff that has gotten on God's nerves and now what we're doing is that we're taking the Ten Commandments out of the state house and we're putting them back somewhere where they hold the trash y'all ain't gonna say nothing here and now what we've done is that we passed laws that said homosexuality is all right huh? and entire states are voting to recognize a gay marriage huh? but I you, I come to tell you today huh? that if we don't straighten up real soon we're going to experience the other side of God huh? yes the Bible says that if God destroyed them back there huh? in Moses
Moses is dead and if he destroyed them in the flood I could I preach up in here I come to tell you today that if God buried Sodom and Gomorrah under the ashes of their own indignation if God let America stand and to me are giving and receiving a poke then I come to tell you God's gonna have to dig up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize to them God is a holy God and what God required yesterday I heard the Bible say that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever if he was holy that day I, 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 I come to tell you this morning that he's a holy God and he's requiring holiness Check somebody and tell him holy holy from the white house to the black house holy from the governor's mansion y'all ain't gonna say nothing here all the way to the crack house holy from the pulpit all the way to the pews holy from the usher boy to the deacon boy holy from the choir stand to the altar workers holy from the guards to the cafeteria staff holy from the audio workers to the cameramen God has said holy touch somebody and tell them neighbor be holy holy you got to be holy could I preach in here? I come to tell you that you got to be holy every day of your life. God said it don't matter how bad you messed up. Don't sit out there like you can do it all and come back when you get ready. But I heard him say that the day that you hear my voice, harder not your heart. How long has God been dealing with you? How long has he been pleading with you? I know I'm talking to somebody here. You've been trying to go to sleep and couldn't sleep late at night. You've been waking up, looking at the ceiling, wondering if tonight is going to be the night that Jesus come and leave me here. But I come to tell you that was God talking to you. He wouldn't let you sleep because your family been praying that God wouldn't let you rest. Take the rest away from them. Kill everything they try to do and you know within yourself that you made God a promise I feel the Holy Ghost you made God a promise and you said God if this don't work out then I'm gonna live for you if I lose this job then I'm gonna get saved if my marriage go down the drain then I'm coming to you and look at it now you ain't married no more and you changed your job but you still ain't made good on your promise huh? but I, 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 I come to tell you huh, that you're hearing his voice huh? if you're sitting up in here today huh, I want you to realize huh, that this is the voice of God huh? I am God's voice huh? talking directly to you huh? trying to let you know huh, that if you don't come now huh, I heard the Lord say huh, that because I called you huh, and you wouldn't even answer huh, and because I beckoned for you huh, and you turned your head huh, God said I'm gonna laugh at you huh, when your calamity come huh, oh, yeah, 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 huh, I got to tell you now huh, that's coming a day huh, if you're not careful young man huh, you gonna want to be saved huh, and can't even be saved huh, but brother Helmut that ain't what they told me huh, but that's what the Bible say huh, that's coming a day huh, when you gonna try to repent huh, and God not gonna even give you a heart huh, not even a heart to live say huh, why huh, because now you're experiencing huh, the other side of God huh, somebody said but God is a God of love huh, but God can kill you huh, and love you at the same time huh, somebody said well God is a God of wrath huh, but God can kill you huh, just as quick as he can heal you huh, and just because you never experienced wrath before huh, don't mean that God ain't a God of wrath huh, you just don't want to see the other side of God huh, but if I were you today huh, I would make up in my mind huh, that before 
before I leave this place, I'm not going out the way I came in. I'm going to come down the aisle and throw myself on the mercy seat of God. Ask God to save me. Ask God to fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. Anybody got the Holy Ghost? Are you glad you got it? said are you glad you got the Holy Ghost huh? then touch somebody to the neighbor huh? if you don't have it huh? you better get it today huh? because I heard huh? I heard the word of the Lord declare huh? that you shall huh? receive power huh? after that the Holy Ghost huh? has come upon you huh? I'm scared to go down the aisle huh? you know what the Bible says huh? the Bible didn't say be scared huh? to come down and get saved huh? but the Bible says huh, it's a fearful thing huh, to fall into the hands huh, of a living God huh? I wish you listen to me today huh? I wish you to hear what I'm trying to tell you huh? it's a fearful thing huh, to fall into the hands of an angry God huh? God has stretched out his hands huh? he's tried to show you mercy huh? he's given you grace huh? but you took advantage of grace Huh? And now mercy has run out huh? But if I were you huh? I wouldn't stay there in my mess huh? I'd stand up on my feet huh? I'm telling you now huh? Everybody get up on your feet huh? I come to tell you huh? I'm pleading for your soul huh? There might come a day huh? When mercy has run out huh? And now you're seeing the other side of God huh? You know what the Bible says huh? The Bible says that when they knew God huh? They didn't even glorify him as God huh? Therefore God gave them over huh? To vile affections huh? Look at what's going on now huh? Being laying up with me huh? That's vile affections huh? Then God said because they wouldn't hear me huh? I gave them over huh? To a reprobate mind huh? Now they don't even want to be saved huh? Everybody else is stirred right now huh? But they still sitting down huh? Acting like ain't nobody said Stand on your feet huh? I come to tell you huh? That's a telltale sign huh? That something bad is happening huh? On the inside huh? Young man I'm talking to you huh? And I'm calling you out huh? If you got any sense today huh? You get out of your seat huh? And come down this aisle huh? For you see the other side of God huh? I'm not gonna let nobody huh? Scare me into the kingdom huh? But I come to tell you yo, 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 huh? I come to tell you huh? Any way you get that huh? Just get that huh? If I gotta scare you in the heaven huh? I'll scare you if I can huh? But I heard the Lord say huh? That if you don't do it now huh? There will come a day huh? When you'll call me huh? And I won't even answer huh? There will come a day when you'll seek for me and I won't even be found I come to tell you today if you're scared to walk down the aisle grab somebody by the hand and tell them neighbor walk me down that way I messed up I did wrong but I'm coming home I'm coming home come on backslider I'm talking to you today it's time to come home come on home I know you left and you left on your own but I hear a word from the Lord that said come on in because daddy ain't mad no more I know there was a time when you felt like you couldn't go to daddy because if daddy was upset then I don't want to see him now but the Lord is saying come on in because daddy ain't mad no more yes mercy has run out but you ain't seen the other side of God yet but if God ever take his hand off of you then you were just a walking day if God ever take his spirit from you then how you gonna be saved and let me tell you this people I got to thinking this morning when I started thinking about God I said God you're so terrible God you're so awful how in the world can they not accept you knowing the power that you got and I got to thinking today I would rather face the devil every day of my life than to face God one day you know why because if the devil is after me then God can help me out but if God is against me I 
heard the Lord declare, who is he that can pluck you out of my hand? Who is he that can save you? If God said it's over, who can count you back in? Once God counts you out, I come to tell you, you don't want to see the other side of God. rather face the devil every day as much mess as I know he's capable of I'd rather face the devil ten times every day for the rest of my life than to have to face God Because God can help me with the devil. But if God is against me, who gonna help me? I feel you. If the devil is against you, you all right. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. But if I am in the ring and I look across the ring and see God in the other corner, when I look back to see who's going to help me, such a terrible opponent as God won't nobody be that I'd rather fight the devil every day than to be across the ring from God and look up and he's my enemy no young man I'm talking to you young lady I'm talking to you I'm talking to you I'm calling you out of love, God is calling you. He's calling. 